Hi there, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the third and final, finally the final video in the restoration series of the Sony CRF 1590. I'm glad to say that uh, the result has left me very, very happy, very happy indeed. And in this video, I want to show you how I go through the uh, final stages of the repair, restoration, the alignment, the uh, IF and uh, RF alignments. I do go into quite a lot of details, so this video, video is indeed quite long. So if you want to watch it, you probably have to put me on two times speed. I sound more intelligent that way anyway. And at the end, I do quite an extensive test of all the bands, just to make sure that uh, it's up to scratch. And indeed, it proved to be. Hope you stick around. Enjoy the video. I've been looking forward to this part for some time, the actual alignment. I like aligning these uh, world receivers. There's a lot of little bits you can do and you start seeing the results quite quickly. Now with this one, I found there's something slightly different. But before I do that, let me show you what I've set up. The AM part of the alignment, they tell you to use a coil so that you're actually aligning with the ferret antenna. I've got this coil wound. I've got the signal from the signal generator coming in here. They don't tell us exactly what the uh, IF frequency is. You have to determine that by actually playing with the signal generator. So that's all set up. That's ready. i powering this with the uh, power supply because I'll be messing in here. I don't want mains in there. Makes no difference. Interestingly enough, they tell you to use the uh, earphone socket output. I've got a uh, mono plug here. This is a 3.5 millimeter jack. And this goes to more than an 8 ohm resistor. It doesn't even have to be this powerful, but this is, these are the ones that I have. And you're actually putting a, an 8 ohm load on your headphone or your earphone. Um, this allows you to monitor it without having the noise. I guess that's that makes sense. You could connect it to the speaker, but to get to the speaker is more complicated. This is a very neat way of getting access to the speaker from the outside. And um, I've got the scope on there, and I've also got a multimeter on there. I want to be able to see what's happening on the on the scope as I feed the signal. It's on AC volts, so it's measuring the audio signal across the speaker outputs. AC volts on the lowest range, which is 2.5 volts. I'm not quite sure what kind of level we'll get. I hope it's enough because I can't go lower than 2.5. But okay, we'll also be able to see the signal on the scope so we don't clip it or anything like that. What they call the circuit adjustment section, and set it up quite quite clearly. It's exactly what they told us to do. The preparation is put a VTVM voltmeter to the earphone jack with an 8 ohm load parallel. So that's been done. I've also got the scope on there just for good measure. And then they go straight into the IF alignment, the AM first. But the interesting thing, it's actually quite interesting how they set it up and start on the AM alignment. Now, this is the interesting part. Normally, you adjust the IF, you tune the IF. This thing actually doesn't want you to tune the IF because it's done with ceramic filters. So it can be eliminated except when necessary. Necessary meaning if you change the filters. The uh, ceramic filter is factory preset and IF transformer is shielded by the case itself. Taken there, you'll have to be very, very careful with how you do that or you make it worse. The IF of the set is characterized by the ceramic filter. So you're not setting it. It sets you because the filters has a peculiar vibration frequency. Okay, so what they tell us to do is power on, band select a medium wave, be a first switch off, and you couple an RF signal generator with a loop like I've done here. Uh, they don't tell you what sort of loop, but it doesn't matter as long as you get the signal coming through the set and you can hear it before you put the headphone jack on. 400 hertz, 30% modulation. So you want to be able to hear the signal. AM modulated, obviously. And your set is now switched on and you should be able to you set the amplitude of the signal generator signal remember it's a 455 kilohertz i think they tell us yep there it is 455 kilohertz and it's modulated with a 400 hertz tone or 600 hertz tone whatever audio tone you want to hit listen to and at 30 percent modulation now you modulate the signal and you vary the tuning of the signal generator so in other words you vary the carrier frequency around 455 to find the IF frequency during the uh, the signal and you want to tune the uh, signal itself the frequency of the carrier till you get the highest peak coming out and that means you've hit that frequency that the ceramic filters are set to it is not found at 455 adjust the ceramic filter core after removing the front panel now again 
that's not something you want to do because this thing might be adjusted differently and uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, it could be at 460, a lot of them at 460. I've had some at lower, I've had some at higher, doesn't matter. So first thing to do is to find out what the IF frequency is. So let's do that. So BFO switch off, squelch doesn't count, tone, usually I put it on max, volume we'll find out. Uh, what I do is take this out so we can hear it. Probably lower the volume because I don't know what I'm going to hear. 455 on the signal generator. I've got about 100 millivolts peak to peak going into that loop. Let's power it on. Oh, it would help if I hadn't disconnected the, the power. I'm hearing anything yet? I'm going to change the frequency now. I'm at 455. I'm going to go down. No. Ha. Huh. That is strange. That is really, really strange. That thing is at 468. That is at 468. Hmm. Surprising. I've had that before. So what I'm going to do is just uh, do a quick check here. We've got it on uh, AM. I'm going to put this on one megahertz, approximately. Where is it? Medium wave, around one megahertz. See what this thing is actually tuned to. And I'm going to send a one megahertz signal. Ha, huh, see that? That's a one megahertz signal coming out of the signal generator. And it's tuning at one megahertz. It means, this is what this means, right? Two things can happen. You can actually have the IF frequency completely misaligned. And there you have to do something about it. The fact that we've got the IF frequency at 468 or 69, I'll uh, look for a more precise reading when I put the headphone jack on, um, that the whole radio would be off. In other words, all the RF alignment would be completely out of, out of whack if that was completely wrong. It would be out of aligning at one megahertz at 468, 69 means that this whole radio is set for that IF frequency. So it's not a problem. Okay, good. I'm glad about that. Let me, I want to show you. And that is that if we have this like that, I can change the amplitude of the signal generator. I'm going to change the amplitude by that's 110, 100 millivolts RMS, 200 RMS, three, four, five. In other words, what's happening, I'll put it right down. What's happening is that the RF um, gain, the automatic control is compensating for the amplitude of the signal. When you're trying to tune for anything that has to do with amplitude, the best thing to do is take it off automatic gain. They don't tell you to do this, but put this on, an, on a uh, manual gain, which means that just hear it there and now if I change the amplitude you see an immediate increase in the amplitude which is what you want you want to be at the radio um, pass the tone through at an amplitude that is reflective of the way the alignment is done so when you're playing with these radios and you want to use especially if you're using a, uh, a coil to induce the signal onto the ferrite antenna be careful with this. If you leave this on automatic, everything will sort of sound the same. So there'll be like, it's almost like automatic frequency control. There'll be a big span where the amplitude stays the same, even though the filtering is reducing that amplitude, but the automatic gain control is stepping it up. Now, this is quite usual, especially with uh, tube radios, where we warn people that when you're aligning a radio, IF alignment, you've got to keep the amplitude way down so that you don't kick in the automatic gain control. In this case, it's easier. You've got a switch that allows you to either take it off or put it on. All right, we found, we will find the exact frequency by uh, using the, the scope. Let's do that. This into the earphone socket. If we keep an eye on the meter, I'm going to play with the frequency. That's 468. 
467. Hang on, I forgot to put the RF gain on, as usual. Manual gain. And right about there. I'm looking at the scope just so we don't get clipping. The noise can actually make it clip. 466. It's clipping, so I'm bringing it. Okay, I've set it at 469, and that's the level we've got there. It's about 0 0.6 volts RMS. 468. I'm just looking at the meter. That seems to be a peak. That's 468. Now I'm putting it to the hundreds. 468 kilohertz point. Now I can just fine tune it. That seems to be the peak. It's 467.8. There. See that? 467.8. Now I've got to take a note of that. Make a note of that because I'm going to need, need that for the BFO alignment. All right. Tell us to do with the BFO alignment again is power on, it's on, band selector is on medium wave, correct. BFO switch on. So BFO switch on. But in mid position shown in figure three. So the mid position is actually not up, it's along there. So we'll put that there. It's angled that way. Just to set the frequency to the, see there they say 455. We've got it set to 467.8. Got the BFO coil, which is BFO oscillator coil L220, C figure 36. Uh, L220 is that one there if we need to zero beat it. Now, what does it mean to zero beat? Well, let's have a look. This is what zero beat means. I've got the um, setting where they tell me to put it, which is here. I've got the signal coming in at 467.8 unmodulated, unmodulated, just the carrier. And if I put the volume up, what's happening is that the BFO is producing a signal at the um, IF frequency and it's meeting the IF frequency. Now the signal might not be exact because you can adjust it with that. Now, what it looks like is if I'm there, I've got about a two kilohertz signal, so it's slightly out. So what it means is that I should be able to leave it there, adjust the tuning of that coil till I get this. Put the volume up. That's the other way. That would be zero beat. There. You should not hear the tone at all. Okay, but we want this characteristic, we want this over here, because that's where they tell us the center point is, okay? So let me put the volume down, and I've got to get this around so that I can get to the coil. Let me set that up. According to the instructions, it's that guy over there, so I'll put the volume up again. Where's the BFO? It's on the position they stipulate. And now I'm going to try and adjust that guy there. Need to find the right tool that goes in there. Hear that? That is near as damn it. That's it. Is zero beating. If I adjust the BFO again, remember it's in that position, okay? It's in that position. Give it some volume. Zero beat. Increases one way, increases the other way. That's it. We are done. The BFO has been adjusted. And that means we've done this. We've done this section here. We've adjusted the uh, L220, which is that guy over there. And the AM alignment, BFO alignment, has been done. Section on the AM is for the RF alignment, the tracking, coverage and tracking. But before I do that, I'm going to handle the uh, first part here, which is the, this one here, FM alignment, the FM IF alignment. Now, again, 
Very interesting way they do this. You don't have to use uh, anything external, internal. You actually uh, connect this to the, um, to the antenna, but we'll do that next. Looking at the FMIF alignment instructions, set up as in figure three. Now figure three tells us that we take an RF signal generator, we capacitor it to the test, and it tells us to use the FM or air antenna terminals. And then the output is the same. It comes out of the earphone jack through the uh, node with the VTVM at the end there. And they tell us to remove the an, an antenna lug. And it's this guy over here. This is the shortwave, I believe. You've got to remove that. That and then the antenna terminals we want are these two over here. Should be quite easy. Now, what do they tell us to do? Well, to set the RF signal generator frequency to 10.7 megahertz, which is the IF frequency, telling us to modulate the signal 400 hertz, 30. So they want us to AM modulate a 10.7 megahertz carrier, and you set IFTF4 to minimum discriminator. So you actually are aligning the discriminator by um, maximum AM rejection. That is one of the common ways of doing this. And it's obviously the easiest way, so they've opted for that. And then they tell us to do a same frequency with FM modulation, 400 hertz, 22.5 kilohertz uh, deviation. Tune IFT1, IFT2, IFT3. Tuning knob to the best signal position. Reading. So basically, you are aligning the discriminator part of the, uh, the final IF transformer to maximum AM rejection, which will be the, the best alignment for FM, for discriminating the FM or detecting the FM. And then you're adjusting the three IF transformers. This one here is actually done through the front panel. I'm hoping I don't have to do that. Oh, they tell us it's F4 and then F1, 2, 3. And somewhere here we should have a drawing, 3 and F4. Where is F1? Oh, F1 is over here. I presume that's F1. Schematic it might give us a better idea of what it is we're actually doing. Uh, they tell us to go to IFT4. Where is 4? 4 will be over here somewhere. Detection happens. Here it is. So what you're doing is you uh, AM modulating a signal, which is supposed to go through the entire IF chain with AM modulation. Once it gets to here, if you adjust this IFT4, F4, so that you get the minimum audio, it means that you've achieved the maximum AM rejection, which means that this should be perfectly aligned. And then you align F3, F2, and F2 is the one that's on the front, which is a bit of a bother. And then they say F1, but I think it's actually F101, which will be, yeah, here it is. Here's the front end. So F101 is the, what they call F1. I'm just looking through these to see if there is another F1 somewhere. These are crystal filter over there for the AM. IFT. Now I think they mean F101. I hope so. We'll find out. Let me get on to it. So these are the filters that we're interested in. This one, this is for the maximum AM rejection, and then that one, that one, and if necessary, that one from the front. Okay. Here's our first discrepancy. I tried to connect that to the, the negative, to the ground of the FM and the signal to there, and I got absolutely nothing. And then when I connect it to there, it works. So it seems that the external antenna I think this might have to be connected to there. But anyway, the point is, what I've done to check that is I've given it a frequency modulated tone and I can pick it up. But there's one other strange thing happening. Let me show you. I'm FM modulating it. What I'm actually doing is sending a tone on the 10.7 megahertz carrier, a tone which is FM modulated. So this should be able to discern it. And let's go up. Deviation 22.5, 400 hertz tone, and the frequency is not 10.7. Let me show you what I mean. Put the tone up, put the volume up. Now watch this. If I go to 10.7, the 
this is actually peaking at about 10.8 so that is slightly off same logic as I did with the AM see just how well this thing is receiving and I know there's a station at 99 which is very very clear and it's not on 99 now the difference there is uh, 100 kilohertz so it's not really responsible for what is effectively a 1 megahertz deviation here John Williams but it is still off so I'll have to adjust that completely and then do the RF alignment completely as well given this a tone um, AM modulated as they ask and if I go down to 10.7 I can hear a lot more right so let me adjust this guy I'm doing this by ear I can hear the tone and now I can't hear the tone okay that's done so we go to the next step it's 10.7 megahertz carrier now we do an FM modulation modulated tone and we adjust F1 F2 and F3 there are three over there so I'm going to change the uh, the uh, modulation just to FM and I can hear it and again it's pretty good enough to do by ear I think F3 is that guy there going off going down put this on the scope so that I can have a, a way of monitoring it it's a little bit deceptive I want to see the, the sine wave which is actually quite useful to do you can see the sine wave you can actually make sure you're getting a clean signal good when you want to hear to to make sure that you're in the right ballpark towards having a clean uh, there is a lot better let's see what we are getting because we're getting a lot of noise as well okay I'm peaking it on the scope actually just as I was doing on the by ear pretty pretty exact pretty precise and there I'm just looking at the sine wave which is pretty good and now they say if uh, what is it 101 mm, 101 is actually behind this thing how the heck am I going to get there I'll have to unscrew this I'm not mistaken it is that one there so let's put the turn back and put the guy over there ah That made quite a difference on the scope. <laughs> Sorry, you can't see that. But it made quite a difference. I have to go to the front and do F102. Uh, the front cover to do. Uh, The headphone jack in here, I've got the tone on the scope, I can see it, and that's the guide to align over there.
and it needed no tweaking. It's almost like somebody messed with the back but not with the front. That's quite common actually. There's our signal and I'm going to tweak these guys with the scope in shot so that you can get an idea. Watch this. Goes down, goes up and down. That there is our peak. Now I'm going to turn this around carefully and now I'll do this one here. That's 101. Beautiful. Perfect. This is three. You can clearly see it peaking there. This is the balancing of the discriminator. It's where you get the best sine wave. And it's done. Brilliant. Now I'm going to make sure that I don't have to open the front again for the RF alignment because I don't want to put that back and have to do this whole thing again. I might have to play with that, so I'll leave this hanging loose. But that's it. That's our uh, FMI alignment. Now peaked to 10.7 megahertz, as it should have been done all along. To do the FMRF alignment, and to do that, if we connect it exactly the same way as we did for the um, for the IF alignment, so it's going to be an RF signal. And they tell us that in West Germany, FM frequency coverage is between 87.5. Okay. This thing is set for 86.5 to 109.5. And uh, the signal generator that I'm using, model from ELV, and the lowest it goes to is 87.5, and the highest it goes to is 108. So those are the two frequencies I'm going to be using. And I've got it just like this. It's modulated. It's sending a 1 kilohertz tone. I've got this little thing sticking out here, and it's enough for, it transmits enough for the antenna to pick it up. So that's going to work for me. Set lower frequency is that we connect that to the antenna. I'm doing it through the antenna, so I'm not connecting it to the antenna itself. At the lower frequency, receiver pointer fully left, FM oscillator coil L106. And on the right, fully right, so you set it to the, um, in my case, 87.5, adjust L106 till it comes in tune, so it means that it's aligned correctly. Go to the top end of the dial, in my case 108 megahertz, and adjust the oscillator trimmer CT105. Those are the two that we need. And where are they? There's the uh, oscillator L106, that guy over there. And CT105, where is CT105? It's right next to that. So at the low frequency, I adjust that one. The high frequency, I adjust that one. So let's get, and I'm going to put it down here at. 0.5. I would say that's 87.5. That's 88. 88.5. That's about the same distance. That seems to be there. But there's something wrong because this was not tuning correctly. Let's try the upper end, 108. Ah, you see? It's quite a little bit lower. It's got to go to here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it. I don't know which way I'm supposed to turn. I don't want to turn too much. So I want this strength of signal to appear here. So what I'll do is I'll tune it in that direction. I can still hear the tone and then I will adjust it and keep following through till I get it where I want it to be. So I want to turn it this way. I want to turn it that way and I want to adjust that trimmer cap. I'm not sure which tool will work best, but it seems to be that guy there. Just touching it and this is a plastic ceramic screwdriver. So it's just the touch, the pushing in that I'm doing there is affecting it. There we go. Give it some volume. There we 
go. Follow through some more. I know it's counterclockwise, so now I can put it on. We, I can put it on 108, and I know I need to move it counterclockwise, so I'll just find it now. There we go. Now we'll go to the bottom end again, so I will put it on 87.5. I expect that will have changed. It's moved up. I want it down there. I want it about there, so I'll do the same thing here, just to figure out whether it's clockwise or counterclockwise. Counterclockwise, okay. So let me put it on 87.5, which would be about there. There we go. And now we do the same thing again. Rinse and repeat, because that probably will have moved the top end as well. really has moved it a lot. I want it up here. Not quite. It's a bit high, but I think the bottom end will bring it down again. Got to take it down again to there. And I'll keep doing this till I get it right. I'm not going to bore you with all the repetitions. Stop. Got it. 108. I can actually check that it's perfectly tuned by looking at the tuning meter there. It's exactly at 108. Now 87.5. That looks like 87.5 to me. Okay, that part is done. Next step in the procedure is to align the antenna coil and the RF coil at the low end and at the top end. And if I'm not mistaken, it's around this area as well. Let's have a look at the 86.5. So I'm looking at 87.5 in my case. FM antenna coil L101 and RF coil 103. Now you're supposed to adjust this for maximum output at the speaker. And then you go up to the top and you do the same with the trimmers again for the maximum amplitude output of the speaker. So for that, I'm going to connect to the dummy speaker where I can monitor it easily. And then we also have to find out where they are. For L101, that's that guy there, and L102. So it's those two, and I can see them, yes. And then CT101 and 103. Uh, CT103 is that guy there, CT101. 
I've seen it there, that one there. So 101, 102, so those two, that one, and that one. Okay. Now I've got it perfectly tuned at the bottom, 87.5, and I need to get this so that I can see it on the meter. To do that, I'm going to plug the earphone socket in the front. There we go, and if I increase the... I've got this to the dummy speaker over here so that I can connect the multimeter. I can still hear it, but I can put the speaker to dummy. And we've got a level that we can monitor quite well. And now I'm looking for peak amplitudes, L101 and L102. Mistaken. This guy over here. I can hardly see it. Bloody hell, it's really tricky to get in there. Okay, Let's see if it makes any difference. Not much. The next one. I don't see any difference. I really don't see any difference. Uh, do I tempt fate and mess around with it or do I leave it? What this is doing is it's setting the bandwidth, the spread of the uh, front end filters so that um, you make sure that the 87.5 goes through well and then at the top end you make sure that 108 goes through well so you're trying to you've got a band that goes like that and you're trying to make sure that you shift it in the right direction so the band you want is receiving well now this thing is probably well i can't really see any difference i'm going to try the top end and see what happens so let's put it at um, 108 i'm going to tune it to 108 let's give it some audio It's at 108. Put that down so I can put the volume up and see it on the meter. And now we're going to try CT101, which is that first one on the left here. Sort of going, it's peaked. It's going down ever so slightly, ever so slightly. And CT104, is it? 103. So it's the third one down. One, two, three. It's this guy over here. Getting in those holes is not easy. Got to use a smaller tool. There we go. Uh, got a bit more out of that. Got a little bit more out of that. Let's try this one again. Ever so slightly increased, but not much. going down, it's going down. I can just see it move. I don't even know if you can, but I think that's done. I'm not going to play with that anymore. There is not much to do there, and I think that is done. Switch off. The we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. Now, this really had very little effect. This had a slight improvement, not much, but slight. Now they tell us to go to the air band. Now here's the problem. I don't have the ability to produce 138 megahertz or 137.5. The adjustments that I did here were very minute, so I don't think this thing is going to have a problem, so I cannot mess with it. I don't have a signal generator that will go to 137 or 138. I could try a generator 
the normal one goes to 22. So it's like the fifth harmonic that I want, or sixth harmonic. It's not going to work. So I'm going to leave that. Because then we go on to the medium wave, which requires the loop. That'll be the next step. Time for the medium wave RF alignment. I've got it on medium wave. I've got the could go into the dummy speaker. And the multimeter costs that. And what I've done is I've set it as they require to 520 kilohertz. And what I can see is it's actually on 530. You know, you can actually use that to align this, come to think of it. Because what I've done is I've taken off the automatic gain control, as you can see. So I can change that to where I consider it a good um, range. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get it to the end here. But I'm going to leave the tone on. I can just hear it. I mean, I've got, I can make it louder, but I can hear it. And I'm going to carry it to the end there, 520. And the one that does that, this row, so one, two, what is it? One, two, one, two, three. So it's that guy there. To put the volume up. And I'm going to bring it closer till I can just hear it. So one, is it that one? With more volume, otherwise you can't hear it. Once you start fiddling with this, you can't move the radio at all because the ferret antenna is getting its signal from that coil there. So we've got to make sure we don't move it. That guy there. That seems to be it. Volume down, but I'll put the RF up. Yeah. Now we go to the other side and it's 1680 on the other end. 1680 kilohertz. I've put that on the signal generator. Should be right at the end there. That's at the end. Okay. Don't need to change that. But if I did have to do that, I would be adjusting P202, which is the fourth one up. So there's one hole, one, two, three, four. It would be that one there. And now we go and we need to set it to, you see how this is changing depending on how I turn that around because the ferret antenna or the coil is on that end there. So now we are going to do the um, antenna coil alignment, which is at 620 kilohertz. So I'll set that to 620 kilohertz and I will tune to 620. Now what you do here is you peak it wherever you get it, really. Now that would be useful, really useful there, because you need to peak it. I can put the volume up. But I don't need to. I can do that. And I'm going to adjust L210. Oh, no, I'm not going to play with that. L210 is this guy over here. And this it's all completely waxed, so it seems to be in perfect place there. I'm not going to change that. L210, and then I go to 1400, and it's CT209. CT209, where are you? 209, second one on the second row of holes. So it's the second one on here, is it? Oh, it's difficult to see. I've got one there. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It says six, seven, eight, and I don't see six, seven, eight. I don't think these holes have been made. You can't adjust it. It's just
just no holes here. It should be there. Okay, this is obviously a sub-model. This one can't be adjusted. Point is, this thing is working fairly well. One megahertz. That is near as damn at one megahertz. Perfect, 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 perfect. Now, with the uh, long wave, you do exactly the same thing, except you put it on long wave and you adjust for different values which are in the instructions. I'm not going to show you that as well because that's a repeat of this. And I know that I can do that very quickly. And then I'll show you one of the shortwave bands and we extrapolate all the others from that as well. Let me get on with it. I completed the long wave. No complications there. Very simple. The instructions were exactly correct. And now I'm going to do the shortwave 3 as an example. And then I'll do all the others uh, the same way. Now, in this case, connect the signal generated to the shortwave antenna, ground and shortwave. Obviously, a much lower signal than with the uh, ferrite. We can actually use that again by playing with the, the RF gain. So let's see. I've got it at uh, as per instructions, 8.9, which is left of the dial. I guess it's a little bit off there. So that would be it there. And we're supposed to adjust 38.9 uh, L205. So five, which is the ninth one from the bottom. This row of here, over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, one, nine from the bottom. Is that right? I'll leave that in there. We'll get to here. Let's see if we can follow it. Well, at the moment, we just want to hear it. There we go. Now the top one is 14.3 on the signal generator. And we go to 14.3, which is the end of the dial. Nope. It's not there. Let me drop the signal generator to 14.2. See if we pick it up anywhere. That's 14.2. So 14.3 is just off the dial. So I'm going to do it the other way around. I'm going to go to 14.230. Let's carry on. 240, 250, 260. 270. To 80 to 70. And we need to move it that way. So I'm going to make this over there, peak it over there, because then I'll gain a few kilohertz. Put the sound off. And it's the 10th one. So I'm going to drag it the other way. Let me just get this into the 10th one. Have it. Now, at the moment, we're looking at 14 to 70. Okay, now let me go to 14 to 80 or 90. Might have done it. go. 2.4. There we are. 14.3. We've corrected that. So we've corrected down there, we corrected up there, and then they tell us to tune the 
antenna coil and antenna trimmers. That's CT212 up at the top and L213 down at the bottom. That is where we need that guy there. We'll put that in the middle, see if we can get any difference. It's the fifth one from the top. On the right on the other side. No, this thing is not exactly the same as well. It doesn't have all the holes there, unfortunately, so we're going to have to leave it. But it's receiving, and I'll tell you why I know it's receiving. Even without an antenna, I am getting stations on here, which is... I'm picking up stuff with no antenna on here. This is very, very good. So that's how you do shortwave 3, and that will be exactly the same for all the other bands. I won't repeat that, and I'll do that, and then I'll give you a test, see what the result is. All right, everything's been aligned, RF aligned. It wasn't that far off. All of them were just a little bit off, and I corrected that. And now I want to give it a try. I'm just going to try long wave. There's not much on long wave as usual. I just don't get much, but there is one station here. RF gain is obviously on automatic. And sometimes we sort of get something here, which is BBC Radio 4. Not much there today, and then nothing for the rest. Medium wave. Well, that is as per usual. The uh, Madeiran station up here, all the others are Canary Islands and Morocco or the uh, African coast. So that is fine. Shortwave one, we don't expect much here. Let's try the amateur band. There's somebody. Gracias a ti, Patrick. Uh, hasta la vista. Un abrazo. 
The fine tuning comes in really handy on short wave. Listen to that. Des moments partagés de tir avec euh, ses grands-parents, il y a des moments de rencontre. The communist regime that seized power in Romania after World War II was well aware of the. Wow, a lot of stuff on there.
Marcelo Fabrício. Tem Marcelo Fabrício. Let's just check out FM. I've got the external antenna on. Os Lobos tiveram imenso sucesso, curiosamente, nos Estados Unidos e no Reino Unido, onde foram número um. Número um com o quê? Com uma canção que também não era deles, era um cover. Era o La Bamba. Expressar, discordar, estar contra. Com certeza, sim. Ainda bem. Estás contra muitas coisas. Por exemplo. Ui. Wish I could see it's something I really mean. O essencial da fé, nunca. apesar das críticas que dirigia à igreja e a todas as instituições. Exatamente, ele de alguma forma. <risos> All right. That's pretty good. It gets all the stations that I normally get down here. It gets a few that uh, I very seldom get well. And it is clear. It is um, The sound quality is great. This speaker is amazing. When I was testing it with that external load speaker, it sounded tinny as hell. With this speaker in there, perfect. Perfect, perfect. All right. And the AFC works well. We've tested that. So... That's about it, my friends. That's about it. This thing looks amazing. By the way, the light goes on by default when you put the AC mains in and off by default when you've got this on battery. I like that. I think that's a great idea. It doesn't waste battery unnecessarily. As for airband, by the way, I have never received anything on airband here and I've tried it on my uh, Grundig 750. It just doesn't pick up anything. So I'm not even going to try that. It's there. It is working. It's making the right noises, but that's about it. Note for the owner, this thing, when you put it in, you have to be careful. Make sure it's not plugged at the other side, because as it is now, it is plugged in there. If I touch that, I will get zapped. So you normally you'd put it in, make sure you don't touch the front or unplug it at the other end and then put it in and then plug that in. So there we go. Just a word of warning. All right. Another thing is this. When you put these guys in, if you look at this, when I unscrew that, right, there's a grommet. This grommet to do is you sort of unscrew it, not all the way, you don't want to take it out, but you unscrew it, you see that? And that means that you can easily put it in like that. And then if you do want to tighten it, you give it a few turns and what it does is it pinches that grommet towards the back and tightens it up. If you try and force it out, you might break the grommet, which somebody obviously did before. Well, <laughs> my first CRF, my first Sony, my first Japanese radio. I like it. I really do. I'm really pleased with this guy. I'm really quite chuffed. And... Um, just when I thought my Sony uh, challenges were realized, I'm told by the owner of this radio that uh, he managed to get a CRF320, a Sony CRF320. 
that is like the holy grail of uh, of the Japanese uh, world receivers. It's got bells and whistles galore, and it'll arrive sometime in the future. I'm not sure how long it'll take, but I'm really looking forward to that. That should be quite a, well, a new experience with a bit of learning going in, a lot of video watching. I know that uh, Mr. Carlson did a full restoration of one of those. I think the video is about two hours. Radio Workshop did one as well, another two and a half hours. So before I even start that, I will do my watching. And uh, if you don't know, I mean, I do more watching than publishing. I, I watch videos all the time. I've got quite a few favorites. Every time one of their vid videos pops up, I have to watch it. Um, case in point, yesterday, Dave Tipton came up with this absolutely amazing restoration of a cabinet. Better than I've ever seen before. Certainly better than I've ever done before. That was a true pleasure. But now, that's all I've got to say about this guy. And if you've enjoyed this series, and if you have, don't forget to click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And of course, if you want to support the channel directly, you can do so on Patreon and PayPal. Links are in the description below. Once again, thanks for watching, folks, and stay safe.